how much can one line of code change Minecraft? Beginning to end, one line of code to change the entire game. Seems pretty unreasonable, right? Out of the approximated 200,000 lines used to create everything from the strange floating trees to the tragedy of this weird shaven pig, surely one measly line of code can't change much. Or can it? Now the game-breaking potentials stretch far beyond this, but I think we should experiment with the staple for Minecraft and everyone's favourite disaster, the creep, the cave spider. As we can observe, the cave spider partakes in many activities including biting your foot, your arm, your face, your butt, your stomach, your left diamond boot, and your ear. So logically, I'm going to change its ability to climb up walls, also known as its only redeeming factor. Listen, if I'm gonna change a spider's behaviours, I can't just take off its fangs and expect it to function. I mean seriously, what does a spider have if I don't let it kill people? Okay, okay, I want this spider to be cool, and as much as I want to make a rip-off Spider-Man, I can only use one line of code, so we're gonna have to capitalise on what the game has given us already. A mob's behaviours are all located in this block of code, and conveniently enough, from here I can access all the behaviours from all the other mobs that really shouldn't mix with a spider. And with that, we bring about the terrifying thought of a flying, exploding cave spider. Truly hideous. But I think we're gonna go with a bit of a simpler one. Fireballs. And with 22 clicks of my little light up keyboard, we have ourselves a gas spider. Now, it's important to note that I'm classifying this as a line of code and this as the indicator for its end, because as much as I would love to put 300,000 lines of code into a single one, the thought of that makes me want to go and fall asleep in a dark cave. Speaking of dark caves, we now have a fireball shooting spider roaming around our Minecraft world. And if I didn't already hate the idea of a massive poisonous spider half my size, then I sure do now. And I'll be honest, my feet are feeling a little bit toasty. Might just be me though. As cool as this is, it realistically doesn't change the game that much. And hey, what if I don't like mining while I'm playing Minecraft mine, mine, ah. Then I would never come across this strange mutation of spider. Ah! Not that I want to, but... So let's move on to something a little bit bigger. Something that's everywhere in Minecraft. And what better to change than the gravity-defying foliage sprinkled throughout our world that we all know and love? That's right, it's the Minecraft tree. Woo. Look, if I make the trees tall, then I can stand on top of them and feel slightly above average in height. You know, maybe I should have coded that instead of coding the trees to be taller. Now I went deep diving through the dark depths of Minecraft code and stumbled across this, which in a short sense is the brains behind how tall trees are. So, by changing this number to, let's see, um, 40, then we should have a suitable tree to fit an odd three generations of baboons. Okay, this one's a pretty simple change, but quite effective if I do say so myself. I'm finally taller than the oh so many friends I have to play in my Minecraft world, what is that? Okay, now I may know my trunks from my leaves, but I didn't expect that atrocity to happen. Oh my gosh, I could build a killer tree house in that. Oh. Although it kind of looks like autumn came early due to the lack of, you know, tree conventions. We get it, tree. You think you don't need leaves because you're better than all the other trees. Curb your ego. You're not better than anyone else, tree. Any, anything else, any tree. You know, I never thought I'd be telling off a Minecraft tree for having a high ego. I'm sorry, tree. You're beautiful on the outside, just not on the inside. Sorry. You look great. Oh, I'm just digging myself a deeper hole here. Oh, look at the spruce trees. Christmas came early this year, fellas. Just a little more abundant than usual. Out of interest, what if I just... Yeah. I'll be honest, I'm scared. It's loading. Ah. It's gonna crash. I'm calling it now. It's gonna crash. Oh my gosh. It it just keeps going. Oh my god, the errors are going crazy. It just keeps going. Oh my Mount Everest could never. Okay, I'm kind of scared to see the fancy oak trees. Oh, it's gonna crash. Oh no, no, it's gonna. Ugh. That's not Minecraft. <laughs> I change one line of code and suddenly you spit out a tree demon. Now that's a tree with a big ego if I've ever seen one. Gosh, get it together, Minecraft. 
be more me proof. I may or may not have broken the game by putting the number to a million. Listen, I didn't think a couple more zeros could do any harm, and apparently sometimes what I think will happen is not what actually happens. And with my Minecraft trees looking like a melodramatic version of those from the Lorax, I had pushed Minecraft to its limits. While changing one line of code, that is. There was no more I could do. I had broken Minecraft as much as I could. Shut up, voiceover. We're not done yet. As crazy as this looks, I think we can go further. Further how? Further by removing the entire ground from below the surface. This may seem a bit ambitious, but I think I know how we might do this. Here, my good friend, is the registry, where all of my cross blocks are put during their first process of creation. And here is the line for the stone blocks. Now, all this requires is a simple control C, control V from the line above, and we have removed all the stone in Minecraft. Now, I think all the grass and the weird stones will still spawn in, as well as the ores that we can't mine due to our severe lack of stone. But I think it's gonna be a wondrous world below the sun. Never mind, the dirt didn't even generate. Imagine not generating into a world and not even being the thing I removed from it. Absolute losers. Jokes aside, I'm not actually sure why it removed the grass and the bedrock too, but I'm assuming it has something to do with the other settings for world generation, relying on the stone to, you know, actually spawn in like stone does. But I didn't think it would ever look this insane. I can't even stress how cool this is to, to open and see the first time. <gasps> look at the water all going down. I think this is what death feels like. I can just float right down here to the diamond or not. Okay. I'm so rich right now. X-ray texture packs, you have nothing on my one line of code. So, how much can one line of code really change Minecraft? Well, I think we've got our answer. From weird spiders to funky trees to the world barely even existing. I think great things can often come from a series of small ones, which ultimately shows how a difficult task that seems daunting may not actually be so complex. Maybe this silly little Minecraft video I decided to make on a Saturday afternoon alludes to some larger prospects in life. Never mind.